What's up everybody, it's Rafi from Zurb, and this week we got part six of our series on Flexbox. Now last week we talked about the XY grid and specifically the grid frame. If you missed that one, I'll link it up, up here so you can check it out. Now this week we're gonna go into Foundation's Flexbox helper classes. There's a ton of Flexbox helper classes in Foundation to help you build your own UI and you can even use them on the grid. There's a lot to go over, so let's just jump right into it. Okay, so let's jump in and start with the basics. So we have our div with a class of box, okay? So what I did was I just gave this box a little bit of a background and a height and we're gonna start putting some content in here and then using our Flexbox helper classes to align everything. So let's get started with that. All right, so this is just a regular div um, and this class of box again just only has a background. So I'm gonna start putting some child elements in here. So I'm gonna just name them with the child class. Okay, so let's make um, Let's go ahead and put the word child in there. All right. So now I'm gonna duplicate this three times. And so now I have three children inside of my box. So I duplicated this three times. So now I have three of these child elements inside of my parent container. So what I'm gonna do is add the flex container class to this parent container. Okay, so this is built into foundation. This is a Flexbox helper class. And what this does is it applies display flex to this element. So now my box has flex container on it. So now it is display flex. So that means all the children, as you can see here, are lined up side by side with each other. So now we can start to apply other Flexbox helper classes and manipulate these things. So First thing, we're gonna do some of the things at the parent level that you can do. Now, these classes work with the grid as well, so we talked about them a little bit with the XY grid. Uh, you can use them with the vanilla Flexbox helper classes to build your own Flexbox components or containers or layouts. So, I'm gonna start with horizontal alignment. So, that's the align, and then um, that's the prefix, and then we're going to add a specific value here. So let's do align center. So if I do align center, you can see what that does. We'll make this a little bit bigger. So here's the align center class. What that does is it aligns all the children directly to the center. So these are all the direct children of this parent container, uh, which has the flex container class on it. Okay, so these children elements, they don't have any specific styles to them right now. They're just um, regular containers and uh, because we put a line center on the parent level it's going to align all of them in the center so we can also do align justify and you're going to use this a lot align justify allows you to space all the elements apart so now as you can see here all three of these uh, child elements are spread evenly apart so the two outer ones to the edge the other middle one um, right in the center. Now if I added another child element in here, you could see that it's still going to space them evenly apart. We can also do align spaced. So align spaced, what that does is it makes sure that there's equal amount of space around each of these child elements. So now they're going to have the same amount of space on the left and the right and the left and the right of each specific child element. So those are some of your horizontal alignment uh, properties that you can use. Now there's also vertical alignment properties. So as we talked about before in the earlier lessons uh, that you know Flexbox uh, parents um, what they do is they apply prop, they apply values to their children. So one of the values to the children is that the child elements will all want to be the same height. So you can see that all of these child elements are the same height. Now we can override that with some vertical uh, flexbox alignment properties. So if we wanted to do some alignment on this, we could do align middle. So the align middle class, what this is going to do is align all of these child elements to the middle. 
So they are no longer being stretched out to fit the entire height of the container. They're now going to be auto height. So auto height means it's only the height of the content inside of the container. Now content inside of the container also includes padding. So there's no padding on these, so they're just the height of the text inside. And we could change that from align middle to align top. And then you can see that they align to the top. And then we can also align to the bottom, of course. Okay, now there's another class here that we could use. It's align stretch. So align stretch is going to make all the child elements stretch to the entire height of the container that it's in. Now this is already by default how the flex uh, children react. So you don't need to specifically add that unless you're using that as an override. All right, so we covered some of the horizontal and vertical alignment properties that you could put on the parents. But we can also put vertical alignment uh, classes on the children and align the children individually. Now this is really handy. So when you are applying alignment properties to the children, which we can also do with the Flexbox utility or helper classes, uh, then we're going to use slightly different classes. So uh, just as you would in vanilla Flexbox when you're writing CSS, um, you could do align self. So we're going to do that in the classes here. So align self is what you put on a child element to align it vertically. So we're going to do align self top. So we put align self top on the first child element and you can see that it is aligned to the top and now it's no longer stretched. So now we can go and on the second one, we'll do align self middle. And then on the third one, we'll do align self bottom. Okay, so you can see that these are now aligning the way that uh, the classes say, so top, middle, bottom. Now the last one is by default, again, stretch, but you could also force it to stretch. So you could do align self stretch, okay? And this is handy if your, um, if your container didn't have a specific height already set on it, then you could have this last child stretch to fill the, the height of whatever that container is. So we talked about uh, some child elements and horizontally aligning them, vertically aligning them, also vertically aligning the child elements individually. So now let's look at some other helper classes that you can use. So we can actually switch this flex container to go in a different direction. So right now, let's get rid of a line space. We can do flex dir and then vert uh, column. So flex direction column. So just like you would in regular CSS, we can now flip this uh, 90 degrees and now we're going in a vertical direction. Now notice what happens when you do that. So we basically took the container that's horizontal and then when we said flex direction column, we're flipping it 90 degrees this way. So if you look at the screen here, uh, we still have the same um, height that we put on this uh, container, but Let's go ahead and make it a little bit taller so you can see this better. Let's go like 420 pixels. Okay, so what happens here is that now everything again is flipped 90 degrees. So now your, uh, what were vertical alignment properties actually become horizontal alignment properties. So these align self top, align self middle, align self bottom, um, what they're actually doing now in the vertical sense is they're uh, moving them horizontally. So just to demonstrate that, I'm going to change the third one back to top. And you can see that now it shifts over. And if I change the middle one to top, align self top, you can see that it shifts over to the left. So in vanilla Flexbox, this totally makes sense because um, the properties that or the values that you use for the properties 
are all the same. So if we did uh, align self flex start, that means the start of the container. So if it's in a horizontal sense, that's the left. If it's in a vertical column sense, then that is the top. So um, the classes are a little bit different, but you can see that you can still uh, move these things side to side, even in a vertical context. In a vertical sense, we can also align these things in the vertical sense as well, um, but we will use our horizontal alignment classes. So again, because that's now flipped over like a column. So what we're going to do is align center, let's say. So if we did align center, you can see that now these are aligned down in the center. So another really cool class you could do is you could align something directly in the middle of the container horizontally and vertically. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all these other classes. All we need to do this is the flex container class. Okay, so I took off all of the classes. I left flex container on here. And so now I'm going to align this child element right in the center of this box. So this container does have a height. Um, so it'll allow us to align this child element right in the middle. So with flex container, we'll add align center middle. So this is a combined class. This does align center and align middle, but all in one class. So now you can see that the child element is directly in the middle of the container, right where we want it. So this is really powerful to be able to uh, quickly center something in the middle of a container, which you know is usually a little bit more difficult if you uh, have done it before many times. Okay, so next, let's talk about grow and shrink. Okay, so I'm gonna add a few more divs in here. Okay, great. And I'm going to align these in the middle vertically. So that's the align middle class. Okay, cool. So I have three elements here. Now, I want one of these containers to be bigger than the other two. So let's say it's like a toolbar and I have you know, a search field um, in the middle, uh, I, want, I might want that one to grow and shrink as space is needed, and I want the other two to just be the width of the content inside. So what I'm gonna do is add one of our classes here. So we'll do flex child. So we're putting this on the child element, so it's flex child, and then grow. And what this is gonna do is it's going to make the element with that class grow to take up all the available remaining space. So the children elements on the ends here, they're only gonna take up the amount of space that they need for the content inside of them. And so if we use flex child grow on any of the others, then that'll take up the remaining space. Now if we put flex child grow on the first one as well, you'll see what happens. So now they're splitting their width evenly between each other. And then again, the third one is only taking up the amount of space that's left over. If you make them all flex child grow, then they're going to each take up the even amount of space to fill the container that they're in. And this works just as well when you add four in there or five in there. They're just going to evenly split up their width. Now again, if you remove flex child grow and you just let it um, be its default width, it's only gonna be the width of the content inside, just like this. So lots of cool stuff. You could build your own components with these Flexbox helper classes. It's really fast for a prototyping. All right, so now you have the power of Foundation's Flexbox helper classes in your toolkit. And this is really awesome because it sets us up for next week where we're gonna build some Flexbox components together. It's gonna be really awesome. I don't want you to miss that, so make sure you hit subscribe up above. Every time you do, the Yeti gets a Nerf gun. They're very safe, so don't worry. So we got a lot of cool stuff to cover in the next lesson. We'll see you then.